Hey guys, it's Lauren here, back to share a process video with you today as part of my commitment to the Hip Kit Club design team. And I have a beautiful mixed media layout here, inspired by a sketch. Now, I, I'm all over this sketch thing. I created this sketch. Now, the last one I created it, I made it way too hard to myself and ended up causing me lots of stress. <laughs> I think there's a process video about that in my list as well and I'm definitely not going to link it in the bottom below <laughs> but I thought I'm going to make this easy on myself when I was asked to design a sketch and make it a sketch for me a sketch that is all about me and make the easiest Lauren kind of layout there is so if you flick back through my uh, little flip throughs at my intro there you'll see the sketch that I created and it's a lovely simple sketch and it's a perfect for mixed media I created um, a swirl at the back and then a beautiful butterfly design on the top, then just a single photo in the center with a title and just a few little bits of embellishment. So a nice, easy sketch. So if you're thinking about diving into the world of a sketch challenge, well then I want you to check this one out because this one could be for you. So as you can see while I've been rambling on about my sketch epiphany just to make myself the one where I get to make easy sketches for myself <laughs> um, I've been de decorating these beautiful little butterfly cut files now these are exclusive hip kit club subscriber cut files but by all means if you are not subs a subscriber to the hip kit club there are plenty of butterfly cut files out there that you could do the same job now this cut file also comes with the solid base as well so if I could have a butterfly without all those holes in the wings there it's just a solid so I've got the top that has the holes in it that I'm decorating and then I'm going to use the solid version and adhere these little ones on top of the solid ones and the reason why I'm doing that is because I'm going to create a mixed media background on my the main page of my layout and I didn't want the mixed media butterflies to get lost in the mixed media background especially when I'm using the same colors to create with so all I've done as you can see is just with a thin paintbrush just move color around I wasn't too worried about them blending and mixing and things like that and as I was doing it I was dabbing it off I the reason why I was dabbing it off is because that pigment is very strong and it's an easy way to create to pull pigment off um, off your page is with an absorbent cloth like paper towel or a baby wipe or something along those means and that just takes up some of that pigment and sort of softens that softens the color now I also then you saw me just add some white splatters there I just all those white splatters are is watered down acrylic paint I love white splatters on things I do it on most layouts where I've got some form of mixed media going on and I've just created it myself just a 50 50 ratio of water and acrylic paint the reason why I do that is because if I water it down it gives more of a droplet not a blob because the acrylic paint is so thick so watering it down gives that more liquidy liquidy form and gives that splatter that that look of a splatter much easier so here I am starting to work on my background and I've got my large butterfly cut file there that I know that I'm going to be using and I'm just using that as a guide. I started off by firstly using a large paintbrush and swirling just the water around the page. So when I put the pigment on, it knew the pigment knew to stay in that watered section. It kind of controlled it. This page has clear gesso on it and gesso is a beautiful product that allows us to add wet liquid product onto cardstock. It creates a barrier between your page and your product allowing you to add a, fair, a fairly ama large amount of liquid without it absorbing through your page. I hope that makes sense. So I love that round swirl but the the I was a little bit unsettled on the inside and I knew that that roundness was just sort of not sitting right with me. So I just extended that out by adding those two sections of, you know, sort of messiness um, with that watercolor there. And it just, that just made me happy. <laughs> I don't know. It's my style. Messy is my style with mixed media. And as you can see, by pushing that out, it's just sort of 
taken that sharp edge away a little bit. You can still see that general gist of the circle, which is part of the sketch, but I've also just sort of softened those edges by working that product a little bit out and adding those splatters. Now, I encourage you, if you're interested in starting mixed media and you're thinking about doing splatters like I have, it's worth investing in a couple of paintbrushes of different sizes. I prefer to use a round ed round paintbrush, not a square end paintbrush. There's probably a more technical term for that. I just don't know what it is. And I get varying sizes. The more bristly, the more sort of fluffy the bristles are, the more water gets soaked up in them, the more the, the more pigment, the more liquid watercolour gets soaked up in, into it. So be mindful of that because then you'll get a big droplet, a big watery droplet on your page if you're wanting it for splatters. Whereas if I use a really fine brush, I get those really tiny little splatters that are really intricate and just add that detail. So obviously on a layout, I tend to like a range of different sizes. So I use a big brush and a little brush to get my varying size in splatter just to sort of um, settle down and help that transition from my sharp edge onto my onto my the base of my page. So here I am, I'm just using some liquid glue just to adhere my little butterflies onto those solid butterflies. And when they dry, I'm just going to puff those little wings up and they'll become a real feature embellishment on my layout. So I'm now going to start and work in on my photo and my photo cluster. Now this photo is of me. I'm exhausted and tired. This uh, COVID time has been a real eye-opener for me. I went from, you know, working a nine-to-five-ish kind of job and uh, in an office where I'd get up and the routine of the day would be to working at home and having to homeschool and um, adjust like you know, 95% of the world has had to do. And I thought I was knocking it out of the park. I thought, yep, I've got this. I can get up at the crack of dawn. I'm going to work for a few hours when my kids wake. I turn into super mum school teacher and we study and learn and do all those things all day. And then in the afternoon when school's over, they get to play and then I jump back into work mode and I work through to the night and Yes, I was having migraines every afternoon. Well, not migraines. I well, I'm not. A, I don't usually get migraines, but really bad headaches um, every day. And I thought I was getting unwell. I did not think that I was stressed out about this pandemic and the impacts it was having on me and my family until my husband said, "Right, something's got to give." He pointed it out to me, and he said, "Right." Our little girl is heading back um, for essential workers here in Australia. Your children can go back to school. So we thought we'd trial and my little girl wanted to go back to school. So for a couple of days, we sent her back to school and my headaches disappeared. And just that little bit of taking that pressure off um, me teaching her and learning to be a teacher and all the other things. And it meant that I could work in the day and not be up really early and working really late it just made the world of difference. So, yeah, I just wasn't aware that it was impacting me this way. I thought I had it under control. I thought I was doing it all. And, you know, the morning teas were great even. The lunches, they were healthy. Like, <laughs> I thought I was kicking some goals, and but they were at a great cost to me. So this photo is of me, one of those mornings, and that smile on my face is like, right, you can do it again. We've got the best coffee. That coffee is like liquid gold. You know when you really need a coffee and it's like the best thing you've ever tried in your whole life? Well, that coffee was that and I thought it was worthy of snapping a selfie. Now, there's plenty of moments like this and it's still going on because of what's happening in the world. But I thought one photo from my Project Life al album will document the reality of what it was like for me for a time. And this is that photo. So the title of this layout is COVID Crazy. This is COVID Crazy. This is me, COVID Crazy. And I thought a fun, messy, mixed media layout would be a perfect um, way to kind of document the craziness that I was feeling and um, experiencing at that time. So yeah, how cute are those title words? A baby soft pink for the COVID and that gorgeous holographic little font there for crazy and I just loved it. So this, as you can see, this layout's come together 
really easy. A mixed media background, those butterflies that I simply add some mixed media on. I mount, triple mounted my photo and roughed up those edges just to make sure that my photo doesn't get lost in all that mixed media and um, added that really punchy title there so it sort of stands out but doesn't take over and now I'm just finishing off with a few embellishments. So if you're new to my channel, welcome. This is how I scrapbook. This is typical Lauren style and this is what you'll mostly see on my channel and if you're new welcome I hope you like my style and if you do please consider becoming a subscriber and if you want to see all my videos when they come out hit that notification bell because that will let you know when they come out and to my current subscribers thank you for watching thank you for um you know, supporting me with the extension of the hobby that I love, which is creating videos for you guys. And um, yeah, just if, if your slant inspires you to help my channel, I'd love you to share it with your friends so that they could come over and see if what I do inspires them also. So just um, trying to pretty up those butterflies with some enamel dots. They're the Cartabella ones. And all these beautiful products that you see are from the April... 2020 hip kit club kits and it's full of the crepe paper sweet story collection it's full of cartabella it's got lots and lots of beautiful well coordinated well thought out products um, that make for a happy bright crazy layouts like this i just wanted to take the harshness off those really sharp lines of how I matted that photo and a way I've done that is I've just snipped a little bit of pattern cardstock there and I'm just about to add those extra couple of little title words there which will just soften that soften that edge. Um, you see that edge is quite soft down the bottom where those butterflies and the title have really just sort of blended that out and as you can see this is and that little tab has just done that as well. So here you go. There's my layout all done. Thank you so much for hanging in there. Thank you for, um, you know, being here with me and um, I'll be back again soon with another layout to share with you. Take care. Happy scrapping. Bye.